What's going on guys? Dan with PC Tech Hustle coming at you again with another video. Today I want to cover with you a free way to get some performance out of your locked Intel processor. Behind me I have an i5-4690 system I built in a Z97 platform that I want to show you guys how we can up a little bit of the performance without actually doing any overclocking. And by not doing any overclocking, I mean we're not doing any kind of multiplier increases in voltage upage because technically we can't. So I thought this would be pretty relevant to cover with you guys as a lot of people still haven't pulled the trigger on buying new PC parts and doing the upgrades and getting the latest and greatest. It's expensive. So I thought this might be a good opportunity to cover since one, I'm a budget builder and I flip these types of PCs all the time. And two, give you a format to see maybe how you can squeeze another 10 to 15 frames out of your gaming rig in its current state. So let's get cracking. Alrighty guys, so real quick before we do any kind of overclocking, we want to establish some baselines of performance. So what I'll do here is I'll pop open Cinebench. And typically when you're doing benchmarks, you want to close as many unnecessary programs as possible. We'll just leave, we'll close down MSI and we'll close down Steam. So really got nothing really particularly running in the background. So let's give this a quick run. All right, and it is finishing up. We got our score of about 542. All right, and again, that's just on all basic stock settings. We don't have anything really run in the background, so we got a 542 Cinebench score, so keep that in mind. And next, let's pop open just a Fire Strike run. All right, you got 3D Mark open now. I'm actually gonna pop open MSI Afterburner as well. Only reason I'm doing that is so it can run my fan profiles that I have already preset for the video card. So that way it'll apply some decent fan fan speeds to the video card and so that I have a constant for that and I don't have anything else that could be influencing that. So let's go down to just Fire Strike. This isn't a very powerful system, so Fire Strike should at least you know give us some kind of basic numbers and ideas on what it will do here. Alrighty. We are all finished up with the benchmark and fire strike with a total score of 9,569, graphics score of 12,674, and physics score of 6991. So let's do a reboot of the system, get into BIOS, and see what we can get here. And I'll go ahead and shut down, restart, and we'll be hitting the delete key, mashing on that to get ourselves into BIOS. Here we go. Alrighty guys, so we are in BIOS now. Just a quick note too, I went ahead and did all the homework in regards to finding the highest clock stable. So to save you a lot of blabbering, a lot of video that is pretty redundant, I'm just gonna show you the menus that where I made the changes. So let's go ahead and get into that. So right here, we're just in the main page with all the defaults laid out. You can see my processor is the 4690, Z97 killer, um, ASRock board, running at 3.5 gigahertz. So most boards are gonna be relatively, relatively the same as far as how to navigate to certain particular items. Z chipset boards obviously are gonna have a lot more overclocking features, but you wanna to navigate to, uh, on this particular board, the uh, OC tweaker. There may be something, again, as I mentioned, depends on your, your manufacturer board, but something similar to this. But here, what we want to do is we want to adjust our CPU ratio. First, we want to select that we want to make the, the application changes to all cores. So we'll just select that. And then once we do that, a new window unlocks with 
giving us the ability to set a multiplier. So 35 is the default, as that's the base clock of the processor. We're gonna just hold down the plus key to get the maximum value that the processor actually operates. So the 39 is 3.9 gigahertz, or in essence, the max turbo clock of the processor. Uh, not gonna mess it with anything to do with the ratio. As you can see, uh, set to auto. BCLK frequency is what we're gonna adjust here in just a moment. So again, I uh, wanna cover a couple few other things here, being the CPU OC fixed mode. So if your motherboard BIOS has this option, it's really handy. And what it effectively does is it disables Intel speed step technology and Intel turbo boost technology. So without having to actually select both and just click disable, what we can do is come over here, select this, and we want to enable the CPU OC fixed mode. And what that does is it takes away the feature of, as you just saw where the menus disappeared, the turbo and speed spectrum. Or I'm sorry, the turbo and let's go back. Uh, turbo and speed step, sorry. So we'll re-enable that so that way those options are now disabled. You can effectively do the same thing by coming to those options and disabling them but for a quick way to do it, we can just do this. All right, so now back up to the BCLK frequency. As I mentioned, again, I did the homework for you guys on this just because there's a lot of guessing and checking and it would consume a lot of time. And, and to be quite frank, it'd be boring to you guys. So BCLK frequency uh, on all Intel chips, I think going back to almost Gen 1, I think is the only, area where BCLK frequency can vary, but it's always 100 by default. So as you can see, as I just typed in 100, nothing changed. So the auto value is 100. So what we're gonna do here is, we're gonna apply a effective, quote unquote, overclock. So we're gonna just bump this up. And as you can see, as I'm doing that, hitting the plus key, you can see that the frequency is increasing on the CPU and the memory. And as mentioned before, I went ahead and found what I thought it to be the most relative stable overclock, according to adding more frequency to the BCLK clock, and that being uh, around the 40, 25 megahertz on the CPU. Anything higher than that, um, I found started to become unstable, and I might have been able to get it stable, but the purpose of this video is to show you something quick and easy you can do to get some more effective performance for absolutely free and of no major worry to you. So once those settings are, are pumped in, that's literally all we have to do. We're not messing with voltage, we're not messing with DRAM frequency, we're not messing with any of this stuff like you normally would with a unlocked processor where you can really take the CPU to a much higher clock speed. So we're gonna hit F10 to save our settings and apply them and do a reboot. And we will be going into Windows here in just a second. Alrighty, we are booting into Windows and here we are. So one thing I like to do initially when I apply an overclock is just do some verifications that things are still operating within Windows. So a quick, easy way to do that is just come over here to CPU Z, pop that open. So as you can see, we're at our maximum clock speed we're hitting around the 40 25 to 27 all right so let's close that down we don't really need that right now so let's pop open Cinebench and this is where we're just gonna give a uh, just a base stability check to ensure that what we did one took effect and is not you know unstable so I'm gonna let this run a few times in fact what I usually do is I'll let it run about three four times Make sure that the scores kind of remain within sight of each other. And if I get through all three, four tests, then we'll move on to Fire Strike, which is a lot more intensive. Additionally, you know, I'll, I'll recommend some other programs to solidify that you are indeed 100% stable. So we'll circle back on all that here in a moment. First run looking pretty good. So 584. And our previous run at stock clock speeds was a, a 541. So we increased the, the score pretty good. 
uh, not a massive leap by any measure, uh, but for this processor, that's some free extra performance that we didn't have. So I'm gonna run it a few more times just to ensure it can get through Cinebench uh, a few times, and then we'll go over to another quick benchmark and see how we improved in Firestrike. All right, so there are about three to four runs and we are looking pretty good. I would like to see this number up uh, over 600, but not bad considering our starting point was 541. So technically, if we take this last score into consideration, we've upped the score by 50 points or about give or take around eight to 10%. So not bad, um, especially considering we haven't really done a whole lot of anything. So we're gonna close down Cinebench and see what these scores net us in Firestrike, as that's gonna be a bit more intensive. It's gonna, it's a better synthetic benchmark, runs longer, all, the, all that stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and run Firestrike just to uh, ensure stability once and for all. And more or less, we're gonna look at it to see what kind of improvements we've made with just bumping the clocks there as we did. Okay, we are finished up with Firestrike. I know that's a better score, but I'm not absolutely positive how much better. So let's take a look at the before. Oh wow, yeah, check that out. So 95.69 to start, and after the BCLK overclock, we ended on 98.56. So graphic scores are within margin of each other. Somehow I got a little bit better of a score this time. But where the big difference is, is in the physics score. So previously I was actually even under 7,000 at 6,991. And now with the physics score on the new score, we we're at 7,676. So we bumped up nearly 700 points there on the, the graphics, or I'm sorry, the CPU score. So that's, that's fantastic. Alrighty guys, so as you can see, we made a pretty significant um, improvement to our score there, especially in Fire Strike, where we got almost 700 extra points on the physics score, raising the score up quite significantly. Um, as mentioned too, you know, those two programs are pretty good feelers for if you're going to be stable or not, but uh, I didn't put the system completely through all the tests here just for sake of demonstration on the video but additionally what you want to look at doing is uh, put put a, a heavy stress on it through other programs like ida64 and run it for several hours uh, i would say at least uh, the bare minimum of two hours uh, additionally prime 95 i like to use uh, that that's kind of like a torture test uh, but definitely is going to show if you're stable or not um, but those are the two big programs that I would use after doing kind of some of the initial testing of stability. We, we know we're, we can boot into Windows fine, we know we can run Cinebench fine, we know we can get through synthetic tests fine, so put them through the torture tests and then that will solidify if what changes we've done here, in, in, in an example of what we just did, uh, is safe and will continue to be stable. Alright guys, so this pretty much is going to wrap up this video. I hope this was informative for you guys. You were able to take away something from this. Uh, I think it's great for someone who 
has maybe a system that's a little bit dated but aren't ready to commit to spending thousand plus dollars or more on a new system and they want to eke out a little more performance as you can see we we definitely eked out a good amount and that will show definitely in your games that'll show as you saw in in even the synthetics so before we cut out from this video just want to make a quick couple mention of a few things got some affiliate links down below in each description of all my videos those are products i stand by that i've either tested or, or i've worked with in the past and or that are even featured in some build videos so check those out if you are interested in some of the products that I've talked about or featured or if you're looking to make some upgrades to your PC. It helps kick back a little bit to the channel and helps me keep producing this content. Additionally, I want to hear from you guys. Are you running a system like this where it's showing a bit of its age yet you're not ready to commit the thousand plus dollars to building a brand new system and you want to get a little more performance out of it? Other than that, if you like this video, give it a like and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.